Hello students, welcome back to Math 332 Linear Algebra. In this video, we are going to look at three very important vector spaces associated with a matrix. So they are known as the row space, column space, and now space uh, for matrix. And uh, these vector spaces are important in the sense that uh, they are able to provide information on whether or not a linear system AX equal to B uh, has a solution, and if they have a solution, whether the solution is unique, or we have actually, in fact, infinitely many solutions. So we'll look at all these vector spaces and how to apply them. And uh, without further ado, let's get right to it. All right, let's begin by looking at the uh, objective for this section. So at the end of this section, you should know how to compute the row, column, and the null space of a matrix. And then uh, you should know that the linear system AX equal to B is consistent if and only if this vector B is in the column space of A. And uh, you also need to know that the linear system AX equal to B is consistent. Uh, then the solution is unique, okay, if and only if the null space of A is trivial. That is to say that your null space of A is only consists of the zero vectors. All right, so given a matrix, a, all right, so of size m by n, so this is a notation for it. So we will refer to these vectors, okay, then we refer to all these vectors as the row vectors uh, for this matrix A. So if your matrix is of size m by n, you can see that our row vectors are actually elements that is in Rn, okay? And uh, similarly, we have this matrix A with these notations with this size. This are referred to as the column vectors of the matrix A. So column vectors, these are all the column vectors of the matrix A, and you can also see that the column vectors is actually element that is in Rm, all right? So for example, this matrix A here is of size two by three, and you will see that we have two row vectors for this matrix A, and this are the column vectors of matrix A. So we have two, one, three, zero, and four, two. These are the column vectors of matrix A. So for every matrix, we will be able to determine which are the row vectors for the matrix and which are the column vectors for the matrix. All right, definitions. So what is a row space, column space, and null space? Now that we know which, what are the uh, row vectors and column vectors. So it is pretty straightforward. So again, your matrix A is of size M by N. So as we can see, our row vectors that is from Rn, if you are looking at all the possible linear combination for your row vectors, so recall that R1, R2, all these are row vectors. So if you're looking at all the possible linear combination for the row vectors, okay? So if you remember, this is what span means, right? So this is a set of all the K1, R1, right? Plus all the ways to KM, RM, right? Where your K1 all the ways to your KM, these are real numbers, okay? So this is a collection of all the possible linear combination of the row vectors. So that's span, right? So if you look at the span of all these row vectors, it will actually form a subspace of Rn. This is something that you should know how to verify. You have to verify they are closed under additions and closed under scalar multiplications. And this is actually a subspace of Rn, and this is known as the row space of A. So row space of A is a span of the row vectors of the matrix A. So similarly, uh, the column space of A will be the spans of the column vectors. Again, it will form a subspace of Rm because those column vectors are actually vectors that is in Rm. So the linear combinations of all the possible, sorry, the collection of all the possible linear combinations of the column vectors actually form a subspace of Rm. All right, now space is going to be a little bit different, okay? So the definitions for a now space, so you have a matrix A, right, of size M by N. So if you consider this system of equations, okay? So let's look at the size. This is going to be m by one. So this is going to be a m by one, zero vectors. So if you try to solve for this linear system, if you, if you uh, collect all the possible solutions for this linear system, then um, this collection, this is not only just a set, obviously these are elements in Rn as we can see. So we can also show that this is not just a set if you, um, if you take this sets together with the uh, usual addition operations and scalar multiplications from Rn, we can actually also show that this is also a vector space. And because this is a vector space um, uh, in Rn, so this is actually a vector subspace of Rn. So 
Now space is actually the collection of all the solutions for this homogeneous system, okay? So you can see uh, from our computation later that uh, we can also write as a span of some vectors, but right now uh, we can write them simply by definition. These are all the solutions for this linear system AX equal to zero, okay? All right, so now we wanted to talk about something very important and uh, I want to do a very quick review on uh, one of the uh, matrix multiplication property that uh, you know uh, very early on in this course. Okay, so recall that if you have an X, okay, if you have a vector X, so this is in Rn. Um, so recall that uh, if you have uh, C1, okay, C2 or the Cn, let's say these are um, the column vectors of A, so I'm going to write A as uh, C1, okay? I'm doing this vertical line here to indicate these are column vectors. This is just something that is redundant. You should know this is column vectors, but I'm going to draw this vertical line here to indicate uh, clearly that these are the column vectors of a matrix A. So if you recall, if you take A and multiply X, okay, this is the vector X here, then you can express this matrix product as a linear combination of the column vectors, okay? So you will get C1, so you get X1. X1 is a number right here. So X1 is a scalar, okay? And then multiply these column vectors plus X2 multiply these column vectors all the way to X and multiply these column vectors. So this X1 here, X2 here, all the way to Xn, these are real numbers. So you actually are looking at a linear combination of the column vectors. These are vectors. Okay, these are vectors, C1, C2, all these are vectors, all right? So you can write AX as a linear combination of the column vectors. So this is something that we know very, very early on in this course when we do uh, talk about matrix multiplication and I pointed out like this is one of the matrix multiplication property that you need to uh, really understand and really comfortable with, okay? So now, if you have a linear system, AX equal to B, so a here is a matrix of size n by n, x here is a vector of size n by 1, and uh, b here is a vector of size m by 1, right? So we have a linear system of m equations, so you have m rows and n unknowns, therefore you have n columns. So if you look at the left-hand side right here, so this left-hand side matrix multiplication that we discussed before, the left-hand side here is a linear combination of the column, all right, so the right-hand side here is B. So we are going to multiply out the uh, left-hand side of this equation. So if you multiply out the left-hand side of this equation, this is what you get. So the right-hand side is B. So you see that AX equal to B, this linear system, AX equal to B. Again, if your X is like this, all right, X is never changed, it's going to be like this. So if we write your X vector like this, the left-hand side of this uh, equation can be actually written as a linear combination of the column. So you see that your B, right, your B is right here on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side you have this. So what does it mean? What, using the terminology that we know, you can see that AX equal to B, uh, if the system is consistent, then you can see that B is a linear combination of the column vectors. So if this, okay, if this linear system is consistent, which means that there exists all this x1, x2, all the way to xn, such that the left-hand side here is equal to b. So if this linear system is consistent, then you can see very clearly your b is uh, can be written as a linear combination of the column vectors. And uh, linear combination of the column vectors means what? Okay, meaning that if you can write b as a linear combination of the column vectors, that means your b is actually in the column space of a because the column space of A consists of all the possible linear combination of the column vectors, and this is one such linear combination of the column vectors. So if the system is consistent, then you can see that your B is an element in the column space of A, all right? And if your B can be written like this, then the system uh, has a solution. What are the solutions? The solution will be in the form of X1 all the way to Xn equals to B, okay? All right, as you can see, everything that I mentioned before is actually summarized as this theorem. So this theorem says that the linear system AX equal to B is consistent if and only if B is in the column space of A. So the proof should be very clear because we actually already shown you the proof. So remember that uh, if your AX equals to B, if this system is consistent, right? If the system is consistent, what does it mean consistent? 
it means that they have a solution. So if this linear system is consistent, then uh, exists, right, this vector x such that your ax equals to b, and we already know what happened to ax equal to b. So this means that you have x1, c1, okay, plus, okay, all the ways to x and cn, right, equals to b. So you can see clearly b is in the column space of a. Right, so this is this direction. If AX equal to B is consistent, then B is in the column space of A. Why is it in the column space of A? Because you can write B as a linear combination of the column vectors. And uh, that means that uh, your B is in the column space of A because column space of A is a collection. It's a set of all the possible linear combinations. Okay? All right, so let's look at another direction. So if, so if, your B is in the column space of A. What does it mean? Well, that means that uh, there exists, let's say I choose some other notation, okay? So K1 all the way to Kn, these are real number, right? Such that, okay, your B can be written as K1 of C1, right? I'm going to draw the vertical line again, okay? C2 to indicate that's a column vector, so all the way to Kn, Cn. All right, so if B is in the column space of A, then uh, by definition of being in the column space of A means that B can be written as a linear combination of the column vectors. So right here, you can see that uh, this is nothing but K1 all the way to Kn. So do we have a solution for AX equal to B? The answer is yes. What is the solutions? The solution will be all the, the vectors which uh, consist of... Uh, the, the component consists of all this K1 all the way to Kn, which means that if B is in the column space of A, then this system has a solution, okay? So see that? If B is in the column space of A, then the system has a solution. That means it's consistent. So we have, we have found a very neat way, uh, a very neat condition to describe when a linear system like this has a solution. So this linear system has the solutions if and only if the B, that vector B, is in the column space of A. That's very neat. We don't have to do any uh, row reductions. We don't have to do any RREF matrix. We can now just simply say that AX equal to B, this linear system, has the solutions if and only if this vector B is in the column space of A, meaning that this vector B can be written as a linear combination of the column vectors. All right, let's do uh, one particular example here. So uh, so these are numbers, so that it doesn't seem too abstract. So you have A, so this is a three by three matrix. You have A here, you have X here, this is a vector X, and this is a vector B. So you want to show that B is in the column space of A. How do you do that? Well, if you do the row reductions, like the one that we know how to do, and I mean, the only thing we know how to do is row reductions. So put this entire system here into this augmented matrix and you row reduce to this. So immediately we know that uh, this here means that two, okay, of these vectors, okay, two of these vectors, right, plus minus one of these vectors, plus three of these vectors will equals to one negative nine, three. How do we know that? Well, because this system has a solution. The solution is x1 equals to two, right, from here x2 equals to negative 1, well, from here, and x3 equals to 3, okay, from here. So you can see that this linear system has a solution, and the solution is 2, negative 1, 2, negative 1, 3, and we know that matrix multiplication like this, okay, with 2, negative 1, 3, meaning that you have 2 of the first column minus 1 of the second column of this matrix A, and plus 3, multiply the third column of this matrix A. So what does this mean? This means that this 1, negative 9, negative 3, right? 1, negative 9, negative 3 is in the column space of A. That's how you do it, okay? So the system is consistent. Uh, your B here will be in the column space of A. So suppose we know this from very beginning. So this is the second part of the uh, demonstrations. So suppose, conversely, if, if the only thing that we know, okay? So forget about everything that we have before, okay? Forget about everything that we have before. Just look at this, okay? Just look at this. So if we know, this is the only thing that we know. Two of these vectors minus one of this vector plus three of these vectors equals to one negative nine negative three. That means that we have this, okay? Which means that this system AX equal to B is consistent. So this is basically a repeat of what we have just proved from that theorem. Uh, just using an example instead of... Um, a general proof. So this is what the theorem says. This is very important. This is like the main thing 
one of the main things that you need to know for this uh, particular section. Okay. All right. Moving on. So we know how to utilize column space to give us information on the uh, existence of solutions. Okay. The existence of solutions for linear system AX equal to B. So now I have a question for you. So this question is that uh, you have a matrix A of size three by four, okay? So you multiply X equals to B. So this X here is a four by one matrix, and obviously your B here is a three by one matrix. So the question is, what can you say about the consistency of this linear system for any B, okay? For any B, if you find a B that is from R3, find a B that is from R3, okay, fix it, okay? Take a look at the system. Can we say anything about the uh, solution for this linear system uh, if the column space of A has dimension 3? Has dimension 3, okay? Uh, so if you choose, so if you choose, say, for example, you pick this one is 1, 0, 0, do we have a solution? Okay, and then if you pick this one is 1, 0, 1, 0, do we have a solution? Do we have 1, 1, negative 1? Do we have a solution? So if you fix any vector, pick any vectors that is in R3, okay? Pick any vectors that is in R3, so B is any fixed vector that is in R3. What can we say about the system of, what can we say about the consistency for the system? Knowing that, knowing that the dimension of the column space is 3. Okay, and then repeat this question and uh, think about what happens if the dimension of the column space is 2, is 1, is 0. What can you say about the system AX equal to B? Okay. All right, I'm going to give you a moment to think about this problem and you should pause the video and uh, once you have the uh, answers, you can restart the video and we will look at the solutions uh, together, okay? All right, welcome back. Okay, let's look at the solution for this problem. So your matrix A is of size 3 by 4, so it has 3 row and 4 columns. And as you can see, the column vectors here is a member of R3. All these column vectors here, these are members of R3. Okay, so these are members of R3. And so if you look at the, uh, the sets of all possible linear combination of the column vectors, which is a span of the column vectors, which is how column space is defined. So this is actually a subspace of R3. But the question say that the dimensions of this column space is 3. And obviously, we know the dimensions of R3 is 3. So in fact, having a dimension 3 for the column space of A will implies that actually these two vector spaces are the same. So these two vector spaces are actually the same. Okay? So which means if you look at the entire R3, so we know that R3, we can plot them. So this is your Z, this is our X and Y. So everything here, this is R3. And in fact, your R3 is actually your column space of A. So now imagine that you take an arbitrary vectors that is in R3. So this is a vector that's in R3. Okay, so this is a vector that's in R3. Obviously this vector is also in the column space of A. So the theorem says that this system will be consistent because the system here is consistent if and only if B is in the column space of A. All right, as you can see, having that condition guarantee that this system is consistent for any B that you can think of, for any B that you can think of, okay? Now, you can see also that the situation will be a little bit different if your dimensions of the column space of A is not 3. So let's draw our 3 one more time. So this is a Z, this is a X, this is a Y. So let's say uh, the dimension of the column space of A is 2. So same thing here, we still know that the column space of A is a subspace of R3, but let's say the dimensions of the column space of A is 2. So it could be, it could be a plane that passes through the origin. This could be our CA, our column space of A. And then if you take a vector, so if you take a vector that is like this, so let's say this is a vector B that is not in the column space of A, then the system will be inconsistent. But if you take a vector that is on the column space of A, let's say it is sitting right on this, uh, the plane, then the system will be consistent. So when the dimensions of the column space of A is smaller than 3, it could be 0, 1, or 2, then uh, we will not be able to uh, be certain, absolutely certain, that the system is consistent for all B. Uh, obviously, for some B, it will be okay, but uh, for some B, it will not. So for this B, the system will be inconsistent. For this B right here, this one right here, okay, 
it will be consistent. So situations will be uh, a little bit different, okay? All right, so that is how you uh, utilize the theorems that says the linear system is consistent if and only if the vector B is in the column space of A. All right, let's move on and look at uh, another example for a different vector space now. So now we are looking at the now space of A. So the now space of A is a collection of vectors, all right, uh, such that A of X is equal to the zero vector. So we are looking for all the solutions. So let's say here the matrix is three, sorry, M by N, right? So then this will be N by one column vectors. This will be N by one column vector. So we are actually looking for all the X that is in R n, right? So we are looking for all the x that is in R n such that a x equal to zero. So if you are given a matrix and you are asked to find the now space of a, this is the same as saying that hey, solve the system of equations. Okay, solve the system of equation, and this is actually something that we know how to do in the first week of class. So we put this into an augmented matrix and row reduce. So let's call this x here. Let's index them as the usual x1 all the way to x, in this case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we do it all the way to x5, right? So this you have x1 here, x2 here, x3, x4, x5. And we can write down our solutions like this, okay, this is our EF matrix. So what we can do is we can look at the pivot. So we know X1, X2, and X4 is the pivot. So the rest are going to be free variable. So you can see that our answers for this is going to be, all right, move the things across, move the things across. You will see X1 is going to be this, X2 is going to be this, X4 is this, and then X3 and X5, they are free variable. And uh, if you co collect all the x3 and x4, so you can see that we can write the x3. We have negative 1, negative 2, 1, 0, 0 for x3. Negative 1, negative 2, 1, 0, 0 for x3. And for the x5, we have 1, negative 3, 0, negative 4, 1, 0, negative 4, 1. So we see that uh, our solutions, uh, instead of writing it this way, we can rewrite it as a vector form. And you can see that all the solutions for AX equal to zero, this is known as the uh, homogeneous equations. So all the solutions for this homogeneous equations will be in this form. That means your now space of A, okay, everything that is, is a solution for the system can be written as a linear combination of these two vectors. So your now space of A will be the span of that two vectors, which is exactly given like this right here. All right, so this is how you compute the now space of A. So this is one of the example uh, to illustrate how you compute the now space of A. Okay, this following example here is going to be important. We are going to use this example to illustrate um, a fax that is very critical. That fax is on the uh, uniqueness of your solution. So suppose you have a system AX equal to B. So suppose we know that the system is consistent. We have a solution for that. The question is on whether this system has a unique solutions, okay, or infinitely many solutions, okay? And my claim is whether or not the system is, uh, has a unique solution or infinitely many solutions will be completely determined by the now space of A. Now space of A will be able to give you that information, okay? My claim is that if your now space of A, okay, is the vector space which consists only of the zero vectors, then the system, if they have a solutions, the solution will be unique. If it is not, if your now space of A is bigger than that, all right, which means that you have uh, at least one non-zero vectors and some other stuff, but at least one of the vectors is non-zero, then if the solution is consistent, it will have infinitely many solutions. And this example right here is, uh, we want to illustrate why this is true and hopefully you can see it, why it works for this example and we can generalize it and give you a general statement uh, and uh, hopefully the general statements will be easier to understand. Okay, so we have a matrix A. Uh, note that uh, this matrix A is already in REF form and uh, you have considered the system AX equals to 550. Five, so we want to solve this system AX equals to 550. Five, and uh, you can see, you can observe that A231, A multiply this column vectors, 231, will actually, in fact, give you 550. Five, uh, let's see why this is the case. 
Now, recall that uh, from matrix multiplication, the one that we learned in the first week of class, if you have matrix A multiplied two, three, one, this is the same as this linear combination of the column vectors. You have two of the first column, three of the second column, and one of this third column. And you can observe pretty easily that they all add up to five, five, zero. So this is true. So we do have A multiply this column vectors equal to five, five, zero. And uh, this is sometimes what we refer to X naught. This is sometimes what we refer to as a particular solution. All right, this is sometimes referred to uh, as a particular solution. Okay. All right, the next question we want to ask is that uh, given this matrix A, what is the null space of A? Now, when you answer these questions, we, even though we are looking at this system of equations, but remember the null space of A has nothing to do with this. The null space of A is the solutions for this homogeneous system. So even though you have the 550, we are not going to care about the 550 when we talk about the null space of A. You replace this with a zero vector and try to solve for it, okay? That's how you find the null space of A. Okay, if you put the things into the augmented matrix, this is what you get. And because uh, matrix A is already in the row reduced form, so we can write down our solutions directly. So look at the pivots. So X1 is a pivot, X2 is a pivot, X3 is a free variable. So X1 is minus 3, X3, and X2 is minus 2, X3. So we can write everything in terms of, you can write your vectors right here like this. Okay, so everything that solves the homogeneous system AX equal to zero can be written as the linear combinations of this vectors right here. So uh, now space of A is actually spanned by these vectors. Okay, all right. What I'm going to claim next is that this vector here, this vector here is actually, so this is actually what I'm claiming is that this is actually a solution. This is actually a solution right for ax equals to five five zero okay for any constant c for any scalar c that you can think of this new vector here this new vector here consists of two three one and c multiply negative three negative two one i claim that this is actually just solutions for the system ax equal to five five zero why is that the case all right the reason for that is that uh, if you multiply this distribute the matrix A into this and distribute into this, and you can also take the constant out. You will see that uh, this expression right here is A multiplied 2, 3, 1, which we know is 5, 5, 0. And uh, C multiply A, okay, multiply this matrix. So we know that this matrix right here, this column vectors right here is in the null space. So it will give you 0, 0, 0. So a scalar multiply these zero vectors is going to give you a zero vector. So you still get five, five, zero. So as you can see, this one right here, this one right here actually form a solution for the system AX equal to five, five, zero. And in fact, we will have infinitely many solutions for the system. The reason is how do you, how do we get infinitely many solutions? Well, we get infinitely many solutions because we have the scalar C here that uh, which can take any value. So if the C here takes the value of five, we have one solution that looks like this, okay? And if this one is, let's say seven, then we have a solution. Also, we, nothing really changed because seven multiplied the zero vector is still zero. We still get five, five, zero. If, uh, if I take a vectors here, which is 10, right? If I change this to 10, right? So this is still 550. So you can see because I can freely assign a, the scalar here and still get 550. So we have infinitely many solutions for the system. Now, if you analyze these solutions, you will also see why we have infinitely many solutions. We have infinitely many solutions because the null space of A consists of a vector that is not zero. So if this null space of A consists of a vector that is not zero, here, this is where uh, this is where we can get a non-zero solution, okay, for this one, right, these terms right here, and uh, this one gives you a zero, but this one here can generate many, many different solutions, and uh, it will give us the, the case of a non-uniqueness for the, for the system of linear equations. Now, remember, I claim that if the null space of A consists only of zero vectors, we will have a unique solution. Why is that? So imagine this is the null space of A only have a zero vectors, only have a zero vector. So this is zero vectors. So you will have two, three, one as your solutions, A, two, three, one as five, five, zero. So even though you can write 
A, all right, and then it's 2, 3, 1, and then plus C, multiply the vectors that is in the, the, in the null space of A, but because of the null space, if it is really just a zero vector, you don't really get anything that is different from 2, 3, 1. All right, so you will have a unique solution. All the solutions, even though you can write like this, your solution is still 2, 3, 1 in order to get 5, 5, 0. But if this vector here is non-zero vectors, okay, so in this case, negative 3, negative 2, negative, uh, negative 3, negative 2, and 1, so you can actually get generate answers that's different from 2, 3, 1. So I claim that if the null space of A, because uniqueness or non-uniqueness is all depends on the null space of A, so if your null space of A only have the zero vectors, then we will have unique solutions if the system is consistent okay now space of a will not be able to tell you whether the system is consistent or not so every time when we talk about a solution uniqueness of solution we have to assume that we have a solution we have a solution then the now space of a will tell you whether the solution is unique or it is not but the now space of a will not be able to give you the answer on the existence of solutions that will entirely depends on this 550 is it in the column space of A or not. Okay, so now this theorem right here uh, summarize everything that we discussed before. So it says that this system, assuming that we have a solution, let's say this is a solution, AX0 equals to B. So think of the X0 here. If you want to compare it with the previous uh, example, this is the X0 that we're talking about, 2, 3, 1. So suppose we have a solution for a linear system. We know that already. So the system is consistent. And suppose the now space of A, the now space of A has a basis that consists of vector that is non-zero. So suppose your now space of A is not the smallest vector space. So suppose your now space of A contains vectors that are non-zero, then the solutions can be expressed like this. The solution for AX equal to B can be expressed like this. So if you compare to our example from before, this is kind of like your V1, okay? You only have one of them, so you don't have every, every uh, V2 all the way to VK. We only have one of them, so our solution looks like this, which is like the one that we have before, X0 plus C1 V1. All right, but uh, your null space could consist more vectors. In this case, we only have V1. But if we have more than one non-zero vectors, these are all the solution. In fact, we have infinitely many solutions, again, because of the freedom of choosing the scalars. And you can see exactly following the uh, example that we have before, if you distribute all this thing in, AX0 is the one that gives you B. The rest of it is the one that gives you zero. So you still have AX equals to B. And this is the x, this is the solutions. So your solutions will not be unique. Your solution will be infinitely many as long as you already have uh, solutions to this, okay? So this is the x naught here is to guarantee that system is consistent. So if it's consistent, uh, now space of A, if it is not the zero vectors, it's not just consists of the zero vectors, then we will have infinitely many solutions. All right, so this summarizes all the important things that you need to know for this section. So solutions uh, system is consistent if and only if B is in the column space of A. Suppose it is consistent, unique solution when you have this. Uh, if you have more than uh, one vectors, non-zero vectors in the basis, then you will have infinitely many solutions provided the system is consistent. Okay, so now let's look at this uh, example. This is going to be the last question I'm going to ask you in this video. So you have a matrix A is 3 by 3. X naught here is a vector such that AX naught equals to 1, 2, and 3. So that means that AX equals to 1, 2, and 3. This is a uh, consistent. This system, this system have a, has a solution. Okay, so the system is consistent. All right, what else do we know? We also know that A multiplied 3, 2, and 1. You get a zero vector, zero, zero, zero. And the question is, which of the following is true? Okay. All right, let's take a moment to think about these problems and you can pause the video. And when you think you already have the answers, you can restart the uh, video and we can look at the solutions together. Okay. All right, let's look at the solution for this problem. So the first one right here, the vector 1, 2, 3 is in the column space of A. This is yes, this is true uh, because this is true. Why is that so? Because we have a solution for the system. A something, we don't know what that something is, but uh, that is a something, something, something here so that it will be equal to 1, 2, and 3. 
So obviously this one, two, and three is in the column space of A. All right. Okay. We have a theorem which says that system, the system is consistent is if and only if this vector B here is in the column space of A. And we have uh, been told that exists and X naught that exists in x naught. So we have a term here is in something something here. I don't know what, but so we know we have a vector x naught such that a x naught is equal to one two three. So one two three is in the column space of a. All right. The determinant of this matrix a has to be zero. The answer is, is true. Okay, because if the determinant of a is not equal to zero, what do we know? Well. We know that if determinant of A is not equal to zero, then your A is invertible. A inverse exists. So if A inverse exists, AX equal to zero has only a unique solution. And that solution is zero because you can multiply A inverse across. Multiply A inverse across. This gives you the identity matrix multiply X. And this one right here give you A inverse multiply the zero vectors, which give you the zero vectors. So if the matrix is invertible, then the system AX equals to zero has only one solution. That solution is zero. That's called the uh, trivial solutions. So we have a unique trivial solutions. But we don't have that. As you can see, we actually also have A321 is equal to the zero vectors. So not all the solutions for the system is zero. So as you can see, because of that, your matrix A better be not invertible. So if it is not invertible, the determinant of that matrix better be zero. So we know that from before. So this is a very nice connection between the things that we learned from last time. Okay, so the linear system here has infinitely many solutions. Well, so we know that this linear system always has a solution. So consistency is not a problem. So obviously because um, zero is in the column space of A, obviously. Why is this zero is in the column space of A? Because column space is a vector space, so vector space must have a zero vectors. So that's one way to see it. Or you can also see that this is always a solution. So we always know that the system is consistent. So consistency is not a problem. Uniqueness, however, will depend on how big is the null space of A. How big is your null space of A? If your null space of A, okay, which is a vector space, vector space cannot be an empty set. So if your null space of A is the smallest possible vector space, the smallest possible vector space is a it's a set consists of the zero vectors. If your null space of A consists only of the trivial solutions, then obviously your system here has a unique solution. But if your null space of A is slightly bigger than that, so if you contain a vectors that is non-zero, okay, and some other stuff, if you have at least one non-zero vectors, then immediately we know that the system has infinitely many solutions, okay? All right, we have seen the reason why this is true. Uh, but uh, so in this example right here, do we know that our null space of A actually consists of a vector that is non-zero? And the answer is yes. This is a non-zero vector that can make A of that vector equal to zero. So 3, 2, 1 is actually right here. 3, 2, 1 is actually one of the vectors in the null space of A. We have infinitely many elements in the null space of A, but one of them is a non-zero vector 3, 2, 1. So because of that, we know that the system here has infinitely many solutions, okay? So the system here has infinitely many solutions. So, All right, this conclude our discussion for this section. So in the next video, we are going to look at how to compute the dimensions of the null space and the dimensions of the row space and column space. These are important informations that we want to obtain for all these vector spaces. Uh, so we are going to look at uh, how we are going to do that and some theory behind them. Okay, I will see you very, very soon.